Egypt is going to have a transitional period, which might be very long. The president and the government and the people themselves should have what we call in Arabic, sabr, patience. אתם מקשיבים לדיוואניה. אנתם תסתמעון אל הדיוואניה. From the Moshe Dayan Center at Tel Aviv University, you're listening to דיוואניה. This is דיוואניה, I'm Shoshi Shmulevitz. Egypt has been fraught with rioting and violent attacks since November 22nd, when President Morsi issued a new constitutional declaration. The decree effectively places President Morsi above the law. at least until the country adopts a new constitution. The draft constitution, which is set to go to referendum on December 15th, has raised a lot of controversy. The body elected to write the constitution is dominated by Islamists, and members of the liberal opposition believe that the draft constitution does not adequately protect the rights and freedoms of women and children, non-Muslim minorities, and journalists. I spoke with Egypt expert Mirat Soref about the draft constitution and the current social and political situation in Egypt. I'm Dr. Mirat Soref from the Department of Middle Eastern and African History and the Dayan Center, Tel Aviv University. First, I wanted to ask you about what's going on right now. We're recording this on December 3rd. Over the last week, there has been rioting and protesting. Yes, of course, because President Mohammed Morsi uh, didn't understand uh, totally the change that the political culture in Egypt went through. He didn't understand perfectly well that the Egyptian political public doesn't want any more to use autocratic means even in order to reach a democratic end. The public wants democratic means and democratic ends as well. And this is why they went back to the square, voiced out their uh, opposition towards their president, their elected president this time. What did Morsi's decree say exactly? Actually, what Morsi did is that he arrogated himself the right to put himself above the law and above the judicial uh, system. This means that he violated badly the independence of the judges and the law system in Egypt. And this is coming after he did a similar thing with the legislative branch of the Egyptian government. Yes, actually, it is the third time that he tries the same mean and he fails in doing it. But this time it was in context of Egypt. being the ultimate mediator between Hamas and Israel, reaching a very successful, till now, ceasefire, being admitted globally uh, and in the entire Arab world and in the area as a very balanced and a very fair mediator. And he thinks that if he reached that status, he could do what he did inside Egypt, but he failed. People saw through it. Of course, of course. What have been some of the reactions, both for and against Morsi's recent decree? Actually, the Egyptian society is being split into two main parts. One who uh, protests against uh, Morsi, which uh, includes the liberals, the more, let's say, secular people, parts of the uh, politicians and social activists in Egypt. And the other includes the Islamist, Moses' uh, political party and the Salafist Al-Nur party as well. What exactly does the decree do? What can Morsi do now that he couldn't do before November 22nd when he issued this decree? Generally speaking, he can do everything. Because if there is no judicial system that can tell him, no, it is against the law, because he is above the law, he can do almost everything. And what he thought, I think, is that this is the right way to make some progress towards approving the constitution, towards elections uh, of the parliament, and towards, as he declared, turning Egypt into a democratic state. So let's get into the constitution. 
The constitution raised opposition because there are some articles that put Egypt into a more conservative, let's say, almost shari uh, state. I would like to relate, if I may, article number two, for instance, and I quote, the principles of Islamic law are subject to the interpretations of the Sunni scores only. What does it mean, actually? It means that the only legitimate interpretators of the sacred law are the ulama, namely the religious establishment of Al-Azhar, as well as the Grand Mufti of Egypt. And there is no place whatsoever to any religious survival of the legal corpus according to the spirit of Ijtihad, namely the option of renewing and refreshing the interpretation of the holy script that is uh, relevant to the changing reality or the changing circumstances. Wait, It's so there's no option for ijtihad? There is no option of ijtihad if only the Sunni school's interpretations are valid. So the previous ones. So there is no option for a new interpretation of the sacred corpus. So the law, it basically says that any option to change the law stops here and now right. at the writing of the Constitution. Right. And after the Constitution is written, there is no potential for change. Right. While Article number two in the previous Constitution, that's of uh, the 1971 Constitution, and even the historical first Constitution of modern Egypt in 1923 says, and again, I quote, the principles of the Sharia are the main source of legislation in Egypt. This gives a space for civil law and alternative interpretation, even for the sacred scripts. So Egypt is becoming more Shari and more religious, according to this article. This is one example that the liberal circles in Egypt cannot approve to. And even the modernist and the moderate uh, religious circles are opposing this article as well. The other example relates to freedom of religion. It is said in one of the articles that there is freedom of religious to all Abrahamic religions, namely Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And what about Baha'is? And what about Buddhists? And what about non-believers? Because freedom of religion means that you have the freedom of non-believing as well. So Egypt is becoming, again, more religious and more strict towards other religions, which are not the classical monotheistic ones. It effectively outlaws atheism, for example. Of course, of course. And there are some other believers inside Egypt. What are they going to do with this article? What are their rights? This very same constitution is being approved by a national referendum in the middle of this month, as uh, Morsi declared. See, it's very problematic. What actually would happen to people of other religions? It means that they are underprivileged if they want to build something, to convene, to fight their own rights as a religious group, as a cultural group. They can have no social organizations. They can have no, of course, no political organizations. And no economic support whatsoever from the state. So what kind of freedom of faith is it, after all? And this is because... Certain members of the Constituent Assembly last week went out of the Assembly, among them the representative of the youth, of women, of the Copts, and who remained the main Islamist that approved the Constitution. That's why the Constitution does not represent the diversity of the Egyptian society, their demands, their fears. Yeah, you're actually bringing up an issue that I wanted to ask you about. Since the Constituent Assembly was started, people have been leaving. Right. Women, Copts, liberals in right. general. So why have they been leaving? What has this gained for them? You know, they felt that all the suggestions they brought before the Assembly were rejected by the majority of the Islamists. After all, they are the majority. And they felt that they could do nothing in order to make any progress towards their own groups that they represent, actually. And that's why they decided to leave. 
what they thought at the back of their minds that if they leave Mursi will reconvene a new assembly which really represent the old groups of Egyptian society but what he actually d- did is the opposite and that's where this decree comes in exactly among other things yeah let's actually backtrack for a minute mm-hmm The Constituent Assembly is the group that is writing the Constitution and... Formulating it, yeah. Right. So how were they chosen? When was the group started and how did it come to be? Actually, they were chosen immediately after Mursi was elected as president. He was the one who chose them. What he said, that actually he tried to be very balanced in choosing these members. He wanted them to represent... maximum of the Egyptian society. Actually, most of them represented the groups he is part of, the Adala and Huria party and the, North, the Salafist, and most of them are belonging to these groups. Very, very little, 13 among uh, 100 are from other parts of Egyptian society, and this is not representing Egyptian people or Egyptian society. And that's the, a very problematic process of approving a democratic constitution. Why did they decide to write a new constitution? What was wrong with the old one? You know, each and everything that belongs to the old regime, the autocratic uh, bad regime of Hosni Mubarak, should be changed in order to open a new era in the post-revolutionary Egypt. And the constitution is a hard core of... crystallizing the new Egypt. You started mentioning some of the offending articles, the articles of the Constitution that are right that are bad for minorities and yeah. how about women? Yeah, I wanted to relate <laughs> uh, to this uh, topic as well. Part of uh, the article uh, related to women, the status of women is surprising. It is article number 68 in which is said at the beginning, that women would be subject to conformity with the ruling of Islamic law. And this part of the article evaporated suddenly, which means women are equally not along the Shari rules, but in general. And it continues saying, and this is the surprise, that the state shall provide special care and protection for single mothers, divorced women, and widows. In a traditional and patriarchal society like the Egyptian society, such an article, which is formulated and reformulated by the dominance of the Islamic circles, is quite a surprise. It means that the Egyptian society, the Egyptian regime, recognizes the status of single mothers, which is a new thing in Egypt. Because till the revolution, single mothers weren't part of the legitimate part of women. Only married women deserved motherhood and childhood services free. The new article says that, and again I quote, "Single mothers will deserve free motherhood and childhood services. This is a chain. And I don't think it is because Egypt is becoming... more modern and more open-minded towards uh, single mothers, but it is under the banner of social justice, even if it is an accident and you are becoming a single mother. On the other end, there is another article that says that the state will follow the morals of Islam in the public sphere. What does it mean, moral? Is it Islamic moral, universal morals? I think it is vaguely formulated in order to meet the imagination and demands of maximum groups inside the Egyptian society. The Islamists will interpret it as Islamic moral only. And the liberals will say there is a universal moral which Egypt should adopt. You can do whatever you like when you are at home in the private sphere. But when you are in the public sphere, you have to follow a general set of morals which the state will dictate and preserve. 
It also seems to follow this very Islamic idea that the private home is sacrosanct and no one is allowed to interfere with what right. the head of a household does in his own home. Right. But when you are out to the public sphere, you have to follow. You have to follow the general rules, which means that it might be Islamic, but it might be a soft Islam in the public sphere. sphere. Otherwise, Morsi is going to face again a strong opposition to that also. After all, the Egyptian society is a modern society. Although they interpret Islam as being authentic, not necessarily religious or ultra-religious. And you can put the hijab in the public sphere and it doesn't necessarily mean that you are a religious practitioner, but you are an authentic Muslim woman. And that is approved among most of Egyptian uh, society. And this is why he succeeded in putting this article into the constitution. I think at first it will be accepted. It depends what the regime is going to do with it. The government is promoting a kind of cultural Islam in the public sphere at the very least. Yeah. What I said in the beginning when the Muslim Brotherhood won the elections is that Egypt's face is going to be much more Islamic. The atmosphere in the public sphere is going to be much more Islamic. But it doesn't necessarily mean that Egypt is going to turn to be a perfect Shari state because that's a thing that the opposition, the more liberal opposition won't do. Let it come true, even if the Muslim brother is going to insist on it. You are going to feel Islam more at schools, at the streets, at the mosques, but not necessarily the way a private individual is going to handle his everyday life. How much power does the liberal opposition have to resist this Islamist well, trend in the government? I tend not to underestimate the power of the liberal opposition. I remember that after the elections, uh, some said that the liberals lost the revolution. They won't be there anymore. There is an end to the Tahrir Square. And I said that the Tahrir Square is going to have a revival again. And it depends how offended the liberal will be through a constitution, through means that the regime is going to take against them and so on and so forth. And I must say that it wasn't a prediction. It was an annihilation. And I was right. Because, you see, when Morsi did what he, he had done with the legal uh, script that he published, all the liberals came back to Tahrir. And they were quite united. The young ones, Al-Baradai's party, Amr Musa, and others... Part of them are Fulul, belonging to the old regime. Part of them are new politicians. Part of them are revolutionary young people, and etc. Now all of them are united in Tahrir against the Islamist circles that are standing aside, not at Tahrir Square, because Tahrir belongs to the revolutionary. The American University of Cairo, or the University of Cairo, is the territory of the Islamists. They are protesting for Morsi there. They are not entering the Tahrir Square because the opposition is quite strong and they can voice out their demands quite strongly. Where have previous constitutions failed? What has been wrong with previous constitutions or has it mattered? They didn't realize the principle of the separation of power, first of all. They gave too much power and too much authority to the president. They didn't honor any civil rights and any human rights. And since the Egyptian society didn't realize their own sovereign power, they didn't demand the change and the new constitution now, after the revolution, when they suddenly realized their power as a sovereign people, They can demand to have much more rights as individuals and as a, a nation. I cannot say that uh, this constitution that was approved two days ago is an ideal one. No, it is not. But some of its article meet the demands of the post-revolutionary Egyptian people. 
the rights of the president. They are more limited. A president can rule only four years and two terms, and that's it. The that last three presidents were in power for two and three decades. This period is no more valid, and it is a step towards democratization. But Egypt is going to have a transitional period, which might be very long till Egypt will turn into a real Western democracy, if at all. It will take time, and the president and the government and the people themselves should have what we call in Arabic sabr, patience. Is there anything you want to add? You know, um, I'm looking back to the first days of uh, Muhammad Musi's presidency. And I can really say that the Muslim Brotherhood is quite, quite a complicated movement and political party. They actually try to meet reality, to have a dialogue with reality, and not to leave for a moment the ideology. Sometimes they succeed. Sometimes they fail. I can say that Morsi, through his presidency, 120 days more or less, was quite successful. He succeeded in navigating between the various demands of various people, of various groups. His GPS actually was very sensitive. But at a very crucial moment, like the past few days, I think he failed. He failed because he surrendered to pressure, to pressure of Muhammad Badi, the highest religious uh, authority inside the movement, not the party. And he forgot that beyond his political home, there is a nation. And the nation that still awaits his deeds for them, as he declared himself. He didn't pay his debts yet. That's why I think that if he wants to survive as a president and he couldn't afford himself to fail, he should uh, be very sensitive to what the people ask him, to what the people really want from him, and to what they are expecting him to do for them and not for his political party and not for himself. This period, this era in Egyptian history has been terminating totally. And I'm not that sure that he understands it properly. That's why he dared to do what he did last week. Thanks for listening to Diwania, conversations on Middle East culture, history, and politics. This episode of Diwania was produced, engineered, and edited by Shoshi Shmulevitz. It was recorded on December 3, 2012, at Tel Aviv University. Diwania is made possible by the support of the Moshe Dayan Center for Middle Eastern and African Studies at Tel Aviv University. For more information on the topic of today's show, please visit diwania.org, D-I-W-A-N-I-Y-Y-A dot org. President Morsi, whom I'm in love with, as everybody says, and so on. So You're in love with him. President Morsi? No, as everybody says. <laughs> 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 you have to listen carefully. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do they say that? Everybody uh, did a process of demonization and said that he is, uh, you know, a fundamentalist and so on and so forth. I said that he is much more complicated than that. And that's why they told me that it seems as if I'm in love with him. It is not enough to fall in love with somebody who is not a fundamentalist and not uh, a radical Muslim, you know. Ha, <laughs> ha,